Uh, it's been exciting, you know. I mean, as a kid, we all knew who he was growing up, and just now that I have the opportunity for him to just coach me on different things because I know he's a great defensive coach, a great DB coach specifically. So just knowing now his perspective as a receiver coach and just helping us with what they might be thinking, it's been it's been very like fortunate just having him. So. Oh, man, it's an honor, man, just to hear it from him. And, um, you know, he know he knows a lot of football. So, I mean, I'm all ears for it, and you take the coaching and you just apply it to the field. He was out there with us yesterday just going over a certain route, you know what I mean, how he kind of see the route breaking and how fast he wants to get out of it. So he's been a lot of help this year, and it's, I'm happy to have him on our side, the right side, you know what I mean? The right side, says Jacoby Myers. Tom Curran, Phil Perry, it's Training Camp Central, brought to you by the Oakers Company, proud sponsor of the New England Patriots. And Bill Belichick said earlier this week, hey, I'm the head coach. That's the only title you people need to worry about. Well, the head coach has been prominently involved with the offense. And today, toward the end of practice, we saw maybe a lead role taken by him. What in God's name is going on for the 400th time? It's a great question, Tom, because it was just a couple days ago we had proclaimed Matt Patricia, the play caller of the New England Patriots offense anointing. in 2022. It was an anointing. They had unveiled him. They had given him the walkie-talkie and the play sheet. He was calling the plays with the loud music blaring and the offense going to work. And then today it was Bill Belichick at the end of practice with the play sheet in hand, conferring with the quarterbacks. And so what do we make of this, Tom? Clearly, and we've known this, he's going to be very involved with the offense all season long. It's something he alluded to even when we spoke to him back at the owners' meetings in March. But he's not going to call plays, is he? I don't think that he ever ruled it out. Here's the interesting aspect, and there are so many tentacles and threads that we could follow off of this, but the upshot and the most important aspect of this is what's the best for the football team? Well, maybe it is Bill Belichick calling plays, or maybe it is Bill Belichick and Matt Patricia in a mind meld. But to be in this position, for it to be the cusp of August, and them to pa be passing around the play sheet like a bong, I don't know what's going on. I mean, honestly, is that what's best for the football team, to have all these chefs? Since Brian Flores left, the Patriots have not declared a defensive coordinator in 2020, 2019, and 2021. Well, 2019, they were terrific. And since then, we've seen backsliding. A lot of Chiefs, no. A lot of Indians don't know Chiefs. Too many soldiers don't know if there's any lieutenant. I like what the Cooks got? in the Kitchen reference okay, a little fair, bit more. Fair. That metaphor f feels like a good one, a safe one to me. I would just look at this and say, Tom, you bring up a great example. Did we not just see this exact same thing happen a couple of years ago on the defensive side of the ball where it was Bill Belichick's show, right, essentially, and he has his two lieutenants, Gerard Mayo and Steve Belichick, sort of carrying out his message. But really that year and even in the years since, has there been any question as to whose defense this was? Even if Steve Belichick is the one with the headset on calling the plays, even if Gerard Mayo is running a lot of those meetings, it's still Bill's defense, and I think we might see the same thing happen now offensively. It just it throws, thing, it throws a little bit of a wrench into things when we see him reading off a sheet, and I know people at home will say, well, those plays are scripted. Well, yeah, so are the plays at the start of every game. So are the plays for the last 10 years with Josh McDaniels here, and we never saw Bill Belichick do that. So it is a change what we saw today, but it doesn't make me think that we'll see it on game day necessarily. It doesn't make me think we'll necessarily see it on game day. But when we talk about the defense is Bill's defense, that's because he's been the architect of defenses since the 1980s with the Giants. The offense is Tom Brady's. And the offense is Josh McDaniels and Charlie Weiss's and uh, Ron Earhart's. It's, that's where it germinated from. If the Patriots are going through what their players have described, which is a streamlining of the offense and maybe a reimagining it, well, who's reimagining it? Is it a collaboration of Patricia, Belichick, and Joe Judge and with a little bit of Mac Jones? I don't have any doubt at all that Bill Belichick could craft an offensive scheme that would carry through an entire season that would be a little bit of everything and a lot of good to the good. But to me, what is the offense? Who's calling it? Who's play calling? Again, at some point in August you need to make a decision, same way they did with the quarterback, as to what are our marching orders. Because I know the ambiguity on defense at times makes it difficult for that defense and those coaches to perform. That's the thing that stands out to me. As we heard even Mac Jones describe it the other day, 
it's a great setup. You know, it's, a, it's an open discussion is the way he described it. Bill Belichick will present. Matt Patricia, Joe Judge will present. The players are getting input, which sounds great in theory, and we talked about it at the time, and I said it is a good thing for Mac Jones to be involved. His brain should be a part of whatever the plan is. But you just hope, if you're a Patriots fan, that things aren't getting muddled, that with all of these cooks in the kitchen, that the message is still clear. And so I think Bill Belichick would say, well, it's my message. Yep. And then these others disseminate it. But it still has the potential, I would think, to complicate things. Again, make the parallel to last year defensively. How'd they start the year defensively? Not so great. They got shredded by Jameis Winston. They got taken care of pretty good by Davis Mills for a while against Houston. Then they went on an absolute tear against some bad, bad quarterbacks. But the Patriots had substitution problems. They had coverage breakdown problems. They had red zone problems. And that is, in large part, in my estimation, not because of the players. They had veteran players. It's because they couldn't get on the same page. The buck has to stop with somebody. And if Bill just wants to be nice to everybody and everybody gets a piece of ownership and gets to bolster their resume for a chance to go someplace down the line, terrific. But is the team getting better? Figure it out. Figure it out. The other thing that I would just bring up about this is that I, I do feel like reps would help, right? Whoever's calling the plays on Sunday, whether they're scripted, unscripted, live situation, going up against a look squad, whoever it is, just to get the cadence down, just to be able to read the plays and have that communication with your quarterback, it feels like it would help. The more reps, the better, especially because whoever's calling plays on Sundays, unless it's Bill Belichick, hasn't done that offensively before. I would think you would want to get this settled early, Tom, and then just move forward with that person being the lead communicator on the field. Well, I think you guys are going to like this nice segue now because the offense looked pretty freaking good today. <laughs> and part of that offense today was a guy that you want to look good. It was John U. Smith, the tight end. He came out and he had a very, very good run. I think we got some sound from John U. Sarah, am I hitting it now? I love football, like, and I, I got here about just loving football, um, loving my teammates, loving the guys around me. We didn't grow up, you know, you know, playing in our backyard, thinking about contracts. You know what I mean? We just played because we love the game. And I think that uh, the reason why so many of us in this game has had success is just because we just worried about playing the game and just playing it with love. And everything else will take care of itself. So the best thing for us to do is describe to you what we see. We have to put you here. I had an editor tell me that once. Look, you have to be the eyes on the ground. Phil, the best play of the day early on was a seven-on-seven seven deep red zone catch by John U. Smith over Kyle D Duggar, a twisting, mossing, spiking it after the reception catch on him. And then he followed that up maybe two or three plays later with a back shoulder catch from uh, Mac Jones, the kind of kismet that you want to see from Johnny Smith along with Mac. Another touchdown, a second touchdown with Kyle Duggar there in close coverage. And that one was almost as impressive to me as the jumping, leaping, twisting catch plucked off the top of Duggar's helmet because the second one indicated to me more of a situation where the quarterback and the pass catcher had great nonverbal communication. Smith mm -hmm. understood there's an open space behind me. Mike Mack might put it right there, and he was able to turn and make the reception. Tom, he told us after, the, after practice today, he's not thinking about playing to his contract, but I would say the practices we've seen over the course of the last two years, this was his best. And this is at least getting him started in the right direction to finally living up to that lucrative contract he signed last offseason. Yeah, we're going to get to that sound about his talking about the contract. But before we do, Phil, you talked about the importance of John Smith. We both have. It's a four-year, $51 million deal, I believe, with, I think, $31.25 million guaranteed. He understands how important it is. He was a 25-catch guy last year. Uh, insanely One target in the last four weeks of the season last season, including that playoff game in Buffalo. One target against Jacksonville in a blowout. Take a victory lap for saying that he's an absolute key and should be the star of. Well, when I wrote camp. my when I wrote my bold predictions for NBCSportsBoston.com recently, I did say John U. Smith bold prediction would be the star of camp, and this is 
one of the reasons why what we saw today, number one, you know they're going to try to get him more involved and make him a more productive option based on what he's making. But number two, there is going to be a scheme change. We know that's coming. The reason we haven't talked a ton about it yet is because we just haven't seen much run game. There's been no pads on, so it's been hard to tell. It's been all essentially red zone action, Tom. So it's hard to tell what that scheme change might be. But if it's what we think it is, some of this Shanahan stuff that is spread across the NFL, that could really, really help John U. Smith, and we'll see more days like this one. Real good.